welcome back to Forgotten Machines. Hopefully you're here on this video because you've seen my previous production, The Computers of Knight Rider on Perry Fractic's channel or on the Knight Rider Historian's channel. And if not, you can watch that right here so that you have a context for what we're about to talk about. Well, let's begin with the procedure for getting the Retro Recipes logo on the Intertech Intertube and the Heathkit H19. Now, the reason I want to do these together is because the procedure for getting the Retro Recipes logo on both of them is nearly identical. As a matter of fact, the same source that provided the Retro Recipes logo for both machines was providing it simultaneously. You may notice in our videos that when the logos were scrolling, that this terminal and this terminal uh, were scrolling in complete unison and complete synchronization. And there's a reason for that. Let's take a look at what that is. So the magical device that puts the Retro Recipes logo on the Heathkit H19 and on the Intertech Intertube is none other than this. Lenovo ThinkPad. In reality, any laptop will do. What we have here is a dual USB to serial RS-232 adapter. What is RS-232, you ask? Well, there's plenty of videos on the YouTubes about that, and I'm actually going to recommend this one. So if you'd like to check that out, go ahead. Otherwise, back to our setup. And in case you're curious, I'm using the USB dual serial adapter by Micro Connectors Inc. And I'll provide a link to that in the description if you're interested. And so these terminate in a, um, in a female DE9, not to be confused with DB9. No, no, it's a DE9. <laughs> For discussion on that, that's gonna be a whole different video, yes. And we connect that to an adapter uh, that goes from 9 to 25. And then I have a, a gender changer here so that the plugs fit. From there, a null modem full handshake. A null modem full handshake adapter is used to connect two devices directly with their serial ports, enabling them to communicate with each other by essentially crossing over the transmit and receive data lines while also utilizing all the handshaking signals like RTS and CTS to manage data flow efficiently, allowing for reliable communication between devices without the need for a separate modem, which is exactly what we're trying to do here. This has no function other than to show me the blinky lights so that I could actually see if there's voltages on any of the signal lines, which turns out to be extremely helpful because at a glance I can see exactly what's going on is a machine sending and this is not receiving uh, vice versa it's very very easy to see what's going on with this so I always use these whenever I'm doing something that isn't completely straightforward and always reliable and then there's this cable which simply connects to the back and in this case it's connecting to the back of just called the main port of the Intertech Intertube this whole monstrosity times two actually connects this USB port right here to both of these terminals. And so now let's have a look at what happens here on our laptop. And so this is running a very standard install of Linux, Linux Mint actually. I don't think it matters that this is Linux that I'm working with here. I think what matters is uh, what I have operating and how I'm accessing the COM ports. What this does when we plug this USB device in is it simulates actual COM ports. It, they just appear. It's kind of magical. And it works in both Linux and Windows and probably Mac too. I've never tried it there though. But it does simulate COM ports. It just makes it think that COM ports exist. So we'll plug that in there. Pseudo Ruby RR Play Real Term. It's a Ruby script. Now this is a Ruby script that I patterned after one that was written by a friend of mine. 
This was written by my friend Mouse. So Mouse, if you're watching, thank you for this. I'm getting some fantastic mileage out of it. I'm gonna show a picture of you writing this at VCF Midwest 2023 at my table. All right, so let's have a look at this Ruby program that my friend Mouse wrote for us. And actually, this is my adaptation of it. I've already made uh, quite a few changes, but I use the basic framework that he provided. I'm also not certain if I should be calling this a Ruby script or a Ruby program, so I'll leave that up to you if you know the difference. I'd love to hear about that in the comments, if it even matters. I said that the USB device makes COM ports magically appear on your computer, and here they are. Now, if this were a Windows, I would show you in the device manager where those COM ports appear. Since I'm using Linux, that's not quite so straightforward. So, um, you know, we'd have to go deeper into that in, in another video if any of you actually want to see that. And if you do, please let me know in the comments. So the COM ports or serial ports, using those terms interchangeably here, that are magically provided by this device are Dev TTY USB 0 and Dev TTY USB 2. What happened to Dev TTY USB 1? I don't know. And uh, if we want to find the answer to that, we'll have to go to another video for that. But in order to keep it simple, I just said, well, these are the two it provides. I accepted it at face value and moved on to uh, get the job done. Uh, I said we're setting the baud rate for 9600 baud, and that's because that is the maximum speed that both the Heathkit H19 and the Intertech Intertube can operate at. They're both set to 9600 baud to receive that speed. And then this program is opening uh, three separate text files. Are our logos big? .txt, RR logos big R.txt, and Star Wars Retro Recipes.txt. Let's take a moment and look at each of those because I think that's going to explain a lot about how this works. All right, so first, RR logos big. This is what the text file looks like. Doesn't that look exactly like what we see scrolling across the screen of the terminals? And this is the reverse R forward R logo made up of pound signs. That's what the first one is. The second one is the exact same thing, except it's made of R's. Now, cool little fun fact, they're made of forward-facing R's instead of this one. I, you know, I thought about making this one reverse-facing R's, like this is, but the reverse-facing R is actually, it's actually a Unicode character, part of the Cyrillic alphabet, and it is uh, part of UTF-8 encoding, which was not supported by those terminals. The only characters supported by either of those terminals are on this ASCII table here, which basically is ASCII 0 through uh, 127 or 0 through 7F, depending on whether you're counting in decimal or hexadecimal, etc. Simply put, the reverse R was just not an option to put on these terminals using native technology. So we got creative and we did it this way, which I thought was kind of fun. And finally, the Star Wars Retro Recipes. Yes, this is a text file. It's a little bit more convoluted, but I really, really liked it and I thought it fit the venue very, very nicely. And this logo was actually constructed by a website. And so what I did was I just Googled create large ASCII letters, which uh, gave me the top result of text to ASCII art generator. And I said, yes, that's what I'm going for. So I clicked on that and that brought me here. And to make a long story short, retro recipes. And initially I just clicked test all which is building all of the 323 fonts that, uh, that are available, which is really quite amazing. And so I searched through here to try to find the right one. And uh, yeah, there's just a lot of them and you would be very, very bored um, <laughs> watching me scroll through these. So I'm not gonna do that to you. Just uh, find that, that, that website yourself. It's got an odd name. It's patorgic.com software tag. T-A-A-G, and uh, then it specifies this right here. I'll put that in the description as well. But suffice it to say that I settled on the general look. As soon as I saw the Star Wars font, I settled on the general look of that. So it was really, really quite simple. We just typed in whatever we wanted. See, whatever we want, and we could put that in the Star Wars font. Star Wars right there, there's a few groups.
like that. And so then you just copy this into a text file and that's how, that's how we did it with the retro recipes. And so the text file was created. So I think you're starting to see what's happening here. We've got some, um, some delays set up, some delay parameters set up so that the program doesn't send the characters too fast and it, it doesn't send the lines too fast. Uh, it also makes it look nice as it scrolls across the screen. So I played with those through trial and error quite a bit. Really, it's just, a, it's a great script. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna link this in the description below so that you can see it. Basically right here, it opens both of the serial ports or COM ports and then it just loops through every uh, opening every file and loops through uh, displaying every character of every line over and over again, and then goes through the delay, then goes to the next file, goes to the delay, goes to the next file, and then just does the whole thing over again, which is really quite cool. And I'm gonna provide a link to this Ruby program on my GitHub account in the description below. And now let's see it work. Uh, sudo ruby and then I'm just simply saying run this ruby script file or run this ruby file rrplay-realterm.rb and so if I hit enter it actually should just start working so here we go and it's asking for a password which I will give it and there we are and here it is displaying the retro recipes logo on both machines look at this isn't this cool? And so this is how we did this. Uh, this and, and, and it's why it's operating these two uh, simultaneously because this same script is sending the, each line of the file sequentially to both of these, but it's doing it so fast. This is operating so fast that you can't see the difference. It's basically saying, all right, send it over this port and then send it over this port. Each, each line, and you can see it draw each line as they scroll across the screen and then there's a pause you know where, I, where the script says to wait so many seconds then it draws the next one and so if you notice the pattern we start with well actually I wasn't sure which one we started with let's let's uh, let's end this control C to cancel all right so I, I just killed it now let's run it again and we'll see where it starts all right so it does start with the uh, with the pound sign the, the double R is made a pound sign. Then we go to the Star Wars. Then we go to the reverse R is made of R's. And then we go back to the Star Wars. So really, these are the three files. So we've got our first file here, right? We've got our third file coming up next, right here. We've got our second file right there. And then we have our third file again I thought that was a nice way of doing this and again looking really closely you should be able to see that the RR's are not the same I thought it was a nice subtle little thing I, I wanted to do just to see if you could uh, just to see if you could catch it let's let's zoom in and and make sure that we get it and we'll do so on the intertube because it's such an important machine for Knight Rider there's the R's Back to Star Wars font. There's the pound signs. And back to Star Wars font. Zoom out a little, look at that again. That's probably good. There's the R's, back to Star Wars font. There's the pound signs. Back to Star Wars font. And there it is. And as you can see, it just loops and loops rather endlessly at this point. Uh, but that was the point. So that's how we got the Retro Recipes logo on these two machines. So all of the other machines, I had to employ a bit of a different procedure. I think that we should tackle those in a different video because this was enough for now. Be sure to watch for our next video Will you see how we put the Retro Recipes logo on the next machine. If you'd like to, you can support us on Patreon. We're going to have a link for that. And as always, we appreciate our Patreon supporters. You help us make all of this happen. 
Wouldn't you like to see your name scrolling up one of these awesome vintage terminals in every one of our videos? You can. Just click this link. It's a benefit of our Patreon supporters. And that about wraps it up for this video. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, take care. Thank you.